how good it is to celebrate God's presence and sing praise throughout each day. How good it is to sing praise and give honor to our God. Our God builds up his people. The brokenhearted are healed, the hungry are fed, the prisoners are freed, the blind are given sight, the lonely are befriended. How good it is to sing praise and give honor to our God. Nature sings of God's goodness, clouds, rain, grass, creatures great and small. Our God sustains the world with his ceaseless love. How good it is to sing praise and give honor to our God. Let us worship him. Amen. And would you remain standing as we sing our gathering hymn? It is Sweet Hour of Prayer. Again, put it on the screen, or number nine, if you reclaim him known before you. Jesus, risen Savior, we come to you in sorrow for our faults and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. Although in Christ our light has come, we too often prefer the darkness of sin. Forgive us, fill us with your spirit, and free us from the shackles of our failings. Give us once again the joy of your salvation. 
and make us instruments of peace and love in the world. Amen. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glorious mercy of the Lord shines around you. In the name and by the authority of your Savior, Jesus Christ, I announce the forgiveness of all your sins. May the Holy Spirit strengthen your faith, heal your troubled spirit, and equip you to proclaim the greatness of the Lord until the day he comes again. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God.
children that are with us that would like to come up for children's chat at this time? I think I saw a couple of blonde heads in the back. Come on up, boys. Oh, wrong way. This way. This way. Other way. <laughs> no, no, no. Not that way. This way. <laughs> he's like, is the children's chat in the nursery? Oh, he's going that way. <laughs> oh, he's going for the door, Grandpa. <laughs> They'll come this way. <laughs> he's like, I am not going anywhere near that guy up front. <laughs> come on, guys. I get it as far away from him as possible. The fruit snacks aren't back there. They're up here. Come on up. There we go. Hi. There we go. Awesome. Awesome. Hello. Good morning. Do you want to sit on this side? All right. Who knows what this is? Paper. It's a specific kind of paper. It's a special kind of paper. Do you know what that is? Do you know what it is? A mail. Yes. Do you know what an envelope is? What do you do with one of these? You put, you put like a letter, you put a letter in it. Have you ever written a letter before? Have you ever written a letter before? Have you ever addressed an envelope before? Do you know how to address an envelope? Well, we're gonna learn today. Do you know what you put up in this corner here? There's something you put up in that corner. This is where you put your name. Okay, so I'm gonna write your name, Silas, and your name, which is, remind me, what's his name? Logan. Logan. Silas and Logan, and do you live in Mankato? Okay, Mankato. Do you know what state you live in? Minnesota. Okay, and if you're going to send it, let's say we're going to send it to <laughs> Nana and Papa, to Grandma and Grandpa. Should we send them a letter? Clark and Jane. Okay, Clark and Jane. And do they live in Mankato? Yeah, and you put their address here in the middle. And then do you know what you put up in that corner? You put a stamp. Ooh, excuse you. And then you put it in the mailbox, and you write a little love note to them, and you say, Grandma and Grandpa, I love you so much. And you give it a little kiss, and you seal it up, and you put it in the mailbox, and then the mailman comes and takes it, and five days later, it gets to Grandma and Grandpa's house. <laughs> <laughs> Today, we are going to hear about prayer. Do you know what prayer is? What is it when we pray? Who are we talking to when we pray? To God. And I was thinking this week that talking to God is an awful lot like addressing an envelope. Right here you put your name, so Silas and Logan, and God knows you because he made you. He's going to open up the mail and he's going to say, well I know who these boys are because I remember when I made them in their mama's tummy. Okay? And then what do you think we're going to put here? We're going to put God's name here. God, our Father, and where does he live? In heaven, yep, in the sky. And that's what prayer is. But it's not like we have to send a letter because it would take way too long to get there. And you know what? We don't even need a stamp. Stamps are so expensive. Okay? We don't even need an expensive stamp. You know what we just need to do? We just need to say, hey God, I have to talk to you about something. Hey God, I'm happy. Hey God, I'm sad. Hey God, my friend needs your prayers. Hey God, this really scary thing happened to me today. Or hey God, I'm really excited about this. It's like addressing an envelope. Whenever we come into God's presence, wherever we are, and many times a day as we want to, we say, God, I'm praying to you because I know you're good. Did you fall? I see you have some. Yeah, did you fall? Did that hurt? Well, we can say, God, I hurt my ankle. God, I hurt my leg. Can you help it heal? Does that? God, I hurt my leg. Maybe I need to be tickled a little bit more and it'll heal. So we pray to God, and we can pray to God about anything, at any time, as many times of the day, and he'll get it. And we don't even have to pay for it, and we don't even have to wait. So should we pray now? Let's pray right now with the congregation. Can we all fold our hands, bow our heads? Okay? Should we pray together? And congregation, you pray with us in echo prayer, and we'll pray. Dear God, Dear God, thank you, thank you, thank you, that, you that you know me, know me, and I, and I can come, can come to you, to you anytime, anytime. Help me, help me to tell others, to tell others to call, to call on your name, on your name to, to in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. You want some fruit snacks? Thanks for coming up. Okay. 
Remember, you get two, but what do you have to do with one of them? You, you have to share with someone else. Okay, so one for you and one for a person to share with. Okay, all right, thanks for coming up. Uh, Jim's going to come and lead us in the word this morning.
thanks be to God. This is required. 
recorded several times throughout the Gospels where Jesus goes off by himself onto a mountain or a hillside to pray by himself. And finally, after observing this phenomenon enough times, the disciples are struck with two realities. One, they have no idea how to do this. And two, they want it. Apparently, John the Baptist had taught his disciples a thing or two about prayer. And perhaps these twelve can admit that they know a thing or two about prayer themselves. But only its rituals. Only what the law requires of them. You see, from boyhood in the synagogue, they were taught the communal prayers to make to God. They were taught what times of the day you should pray. They were taught the posture of prayer. Are you standing? Are you sitting? Are you kneeling? They were taught to do things with their hands and bodies, the do's and don'ts, routines. And yet, our Lord is completely uninterested in any of that. Lord, teach us to pray. Now, let's be honest. How many of us wouldn't ask Jesus the exact same question if we had the chance? This question, like the story of Mary and Martha last week, is so human that we can taste the question of the disciples on our lips. <clears throat> Lord, what shall we pray for? Lord, how do we know that what we're praying for is the right thing? Lord, how often should we pray? Where should we pray? What should we be doing while we pray? When it comes to prayer in the Christian life, questions abound. Especially when we think that God has a list of expectations or etiquette requirements to achieve before he'll bend his ear down to listen. Perhaps we think that we shouldn't bother God too often, particularly with the same request. So we begin our prayer sheepishly by saying, Lord, I know you've listened to me pray about my grandson so many times, but let me just bring it up one more and then I'll never bother you again. Or perhaps like Moses, we feel our words are not eloquent enough, that we too are slow of tongue. So we timidly begin each petition by saying, Lord, I know I'm not as good at praying as the lady who always prays at Bible study. Perhaps we even feel that we are praying for the wrong things altogether. So we enter into conversation with God hesitantly, saying, Lord, I know this is probably a small or a stupid thing to pray for, but fill in the blank. Dear friends in Christ, sheepishness, timidness, hesitancy, three words that have no place in the life of prayer. In the first commandment, God has given us his name. I am the Lord your God. I am yours and you are mine. And then in the second commandment, God has told us how to use his name, not in vain, but in times of joy and need, in times of abundance and scarcity. The God of the first and the second commandment desires to hear from you. And his desire is not that you enter into his presence with reluctancy or modesty, but with boldness and audacity. This is, after all, why, when he is teaching his disciples about prayer, the Lord gives us this almost laughable parable as an illustration. A man has unexpected guests who arrive at midnight to stay at his house. No forewarning, no time to prepare, and what do we know about hospitality in the ancient world? Well, Martha taught us about it last week. Hospitality was the ultimate, the most important. So upon realizing that he does not have any bread to feed his guests, and that there is not a helpful smile in every aisle at the nearest high bee on every corner, he has no choice but to run to his neighbor's home to have this need met. Give me some bread. Now, did the man run to his neighbor's home sheepishly? Was he timid as he knocked? barely tapping at the door? Do you think he was hesitant as he rang the doorbell? No. Jesus says he was impudent. Now when's the last time you used the word impudent in your daily vocabulary? Anyone use that word often? No, either do I. So what's the Greek translation of the word? It is 
is shameless. The man was flagrantly and wantonly outrageous to the point where his friend, who had been fast asleep, dons his robe and his slippers to come downstairs and fulfill his request. The neighbor gripes and moans about the door being shut and not wanting to get out of bed, but he does it anyway. But did it have anything to do with the man down at the door using the right or most eloquent words? Before he came down out of bed, did he say, well, are you kneeling or standing? Are your hands folded and your eyes closed? No. It had everything to do with persistence. With what we call holy chutzpah. And this is prayer. In a world today, where we would say this man is pushing the limits of his neighbor's friendship, God says, this is how you approach me, because I have left the light on for you. Unlike the neighbor in the parable who is fast asleep with his children by him in bed, our God never slumbers. Unlike the neighbor in the parable who is reluctant to hand over the bread that he himself has baked for his family, our God enthusiastically gives not just three loaves of bread once in the middle of the night, but abundantly gives loaves of daily bread every time. So when our Lord teaches about prayer, he gives some of the most famous words associated with Christianity. He gives the Lord's Prayer. Some of these words are found in Matthew's version, which is a little bit longer, but we hold these words dear. And it would be easy to look at the Lord's Prayer. And sadly, there are contemporary churches today who look at the Lord's Prayer in this way. It would be easy to look at the Lord's Prayer as an insignificant, rote, monotonous fixture in the liturgy that we just power through Sunday after Sunday, maybe even day after day, and we've long since committed it to memory, and we say, well, doesn't God ever tire of hearing these century-old petitions? No. Why else would he give these words to me? For in these words, we find all of our needs are met, beginning with the fact that we have a Father, and if we have a father, we are his children. And what kind of father doesn't know how to give good gifts to his kids? What father, when a child asks for a fish, will give him a serpent, says Jesus? Or I say, what kind of father, when his kid asks for a cone of ice cream, gives him a can of Spam instead? In the Lord's Prayer, we pray for the kingdom of faith to come in the midst of a worldly kingdom that is falling apart. We pray for our daily sustenance, that we would have all that we need. We pray for the forgiveness of our sins. And we pray that we would have the grace to forgive the sins of those who have wronged us. And perhaps this is the best part, dear ones, at Resurrection Lutheran Church. We do not have to wait until midnight when our guests have arrived unexpectedly and we find ourselves in a pickle. If we pray for daily bread, if we have been taught to pray for daily bread, it means that God wants to hear from us a daily, both in the monotony of life and in our desperation. If we pray for daily bread, if we are taught to pray for daily bread, it means that God wants us to storm the gates of heaven maybe hourly, if needed, in both the dullness of life and those moments when we are completely at our breaking point. And in those moments of life, when we cannot come up with the words to say, and we can only groan, when we can only weep, when we have been brought to our knees because life has leveled us, when death has come and heartbreak has come, and sickness has come, and we cannot even muster a sound. Our God will do us one better. He will pray for us. For us. Through the power of His Holy Spirit. Through our moaning and our sighs. Our God, who is not found in bed, who will not be found even catching a nap, has the light on and the coffee poured at the kitchen table before we can even hit the sidewalk. Seek and you will find. Find out the first commandment. Your Father, standing at the door, ready 
to give you his best use. Amen. You may remain seated as we sing our hymn of the day. It's printed on the back of your bulletin. We sing CP first. <laughs> Lord of the nations. 
nations, your word remains, and your word reminds us that you regard the lowly, but you know only the haughty or prideful from afar. Grant us civil leaders in our country who will approach you with humility and meekness. Civil leaders who would serve according to your will and condemn what is evil and seek what is good. We pray for our president, our vice president, our representatives in Congress and the Minnesota State House, our governor, our mayor, our city council. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of peace, we often forget that the peace and security we are afforded in this nation are gifts of daily bread from you. Forgive us when we take our freedoms for granted. Answer the prayers and do not remove your hand from all those who stand in harm's way to protect life and liberty. Give courage and competency to the men and women of the United States Armed Forces. Heal wounds, divide soul and mind. Restore them into the fellowship of their loved ones and make us truly thankful for their sacrifices. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of all mercy and consolation, you are Abba. You are Father. You leave the light on for us. You are ready and listening when we call to you. We are anxious and troubled. Soothe the suffering of those who cry out to you in their time of need. Sustain their caretakers. Be the balm of healing for those who are struggling in illness of mind, body, or spirit. Especially Paul and Donna, Donald and Jim, Sarah, Craig, Joe, Polly, and those we remember in the silence of our hearts before you. Lord, in your mercy, in your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Oh, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And I'll invite the choir back up one more time as they sing our benediction for us. Verses 1 through 4, would you please rise as we sing?
loving and serving in the name of our crucified and risen Lord. Thanks be to God. God.